very sick and go to the hospital are the ones that don't take their vaccine. But it's still their choice. And if you take the vaccine, you're protected. People aren't dying when they take the vaccine. With us is Republican strategist Alice Stewart and White House correspondent and Washington bureau chief for the GRIO, April Ryan. Merry Christmas to you both. Thank you so much for joining me on this special day. Um, so, Alice, to you first. Why do you think this relatively strong vaccine endorsement is coming from Donald Trump now? Well, Merry Christmas to you as well, Emra. I think, it, like you say, it's a Christmas miracle. And, and I, I'm glad to hear him give a full-throated endorsement uh, for the vaccine. I was glad when he recently uh, told a crowd of supporters that he got the booster shot. And that's a good thing. Uh, look, we have to give uh, former President Trump credit for the work he did do in Operation Warp Speed and in getting the vaccines approved and out to, to the arms uh, as quickly as possible. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, it has been frustrating to see some uh, conservative voices show any kind of skepticism about the vaccine or, or masks. But the more we can do what the president uh, has been doing in putting more faith and confidence in the vaccine and sharing that message, uh, the better. And I hope he continues to do so. Well, in terms of the impact, though, right, it might be too little too late to sway uh, some of the vaccine skeptics. Um, to you, April, I mean, Dr. Jerome Adams, the Surgeon General under President Trump, he simplified it by saying, look, you know, Trump changed his tune because President Biden finally praised him uh, when it comes to vaccines. Do you think it's really that simple? I mean, he is quite transactional. He's transactional, but if this is about his ego, you have to remember so many people died. If Donald Trump needs someone to stroke his ego to praise him about the fact that he oversaw um, the, the efficacy, the, the push for these vaccines, go do it. But at the end of the day, it's not about ego. It's about people's lives. This is the time when people are dying from a virus we do not understand. We do not understand what's going to happen next. We don't understand how it changes shape, how it changes into something different that is even more contagious. This is not a time when we need to be worried about our ego. We need to be worried about people getting tested, people getting vaccinated, and boosters. And we have to remember, Alice, that and, and happy Merry Christmas, Alice. But we have to remember also that this president is a large part of the problem as to why people are believing these conspiracy theories and why people are not getting vaccinated for the most part because they believe his lie. So now he's trying to become president, so he realizes the nation is not standing for those lies he once told. And that's why it's now telling the truth. Alice, you want to respond to that? And, um, you know, that fact that Trump, uh, you know, may be part of the big reason why we have so many people who don't want a vaccine. Yeah, start off again. Uh, Merry Christmas to you as well, April. And you have a point to some degree, April. I wish when the president got his first vaccine, he would have done so publicly for everyone to see and shown people that it's quick and painless and extremely important. Unfortunately, he did not do that. Uh, what, what I will say is I'm glad he's on the right page now. And whether, whatever the reason, whether say it's his ego or people are praising him, the, the important takeaway is the fact that he is supporting uh, vaccines, encouraging people to get boosters, and even standing up to strong supporters and conservative voices when they're spreading misinformation. So uh, I'm going to look at this as a net positive. Well, let's turn to what's so happening. Go ahead, April. Amber, let me say this real quick. On this Christmas Day, truth prevails. Two years later, I was in that White House and Donald Trump was calling it a Democratic hoax for months, for months, for months, for months. And until he got it when he wanted to be Superman and put on a cape and say, I've beaten this. Alice, it took two, we are now two years plus in, and he's finally telling the truth about it. The damage by Donald Trump has been done, even though he oversaw, you know, the fact that these three vaccines were put together to damage it's deadly. It has been done. Yeah, uh, I mean, and he didn't disclose. He refused to disclose his vaccination status, right? Even as, as right. president, when he had uh, that that bully pulpit. Uh, let's let's focus yeah. on the administration now. And look, you know, I have to tell you, ladies. So I had a small Christmas gathering. To be transparent, we were all vaccinated. We're boosted. Uh, my husband, uh, you know, texted all our friends and said, "Look, you all need to test negative before coming in." So we went out to go buy rapid tests. Um, yeah. Look, we at the end of the day, we were able to find them and everyone tested negative. Thank goodness. And we were able to have our small dinner. 
But the tests are so difficult to find. All of our friends are driving around, going to CVS, Walgreens, uh, what have you. And then you see these incredibly long lines, testing lines. And look, it's heartening to see that people are trying to do the right thing before gathering or traveling. But people are waiting hours to get tested. I was at one of those sites uh, just the other day reporting on that. We're seeing higher daily case rates now than we were during the peak of the Delta variant as well. Um, so, you know, Let's start with you, April. I mean, how much blame does President Biden deserve for this? Well, you know, to be honest, Amra, from the very beginning, there has been a problem with testing. Remember when the kids didn't have the swabs that they needed? So this is kind of along the course, but within two years, you would have thought that this would have been fixed. Um, now we've got different variants that are more, people are more susceptible. The government, the private industry has got to respond to the demand because we have to also be clear that these tests will not stop COVID. But what they will do is give us that 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 snapshot, that straw hole snapshot, and that window of time, um, a baseline of when we got it or when if we don't have it. But right now, I'm with you, Tamara. I'm I'm trying to buy a lot of um, kids and going um, to to get tested myself. Because I keep getting these things from Washington, D.C., saying yeah. I've been a, someone who tested positive for COVID. And I'm trying to have a gap. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and they're not cheap, right? I mean, that's the other issue. They're, is, not, is they're not cheap. They're not easy to find, and they're not cheap. And so something needs to change. $900 for one kid. Exactly. Yeah. You, ladies, yeah. we're going to have to leave it here. I'm so sorry. We've got to go. But Merry Christmas to you both. I, I hope Merry you're Christmas. able to have your gatherings uh, as safely <laughs> as possible. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Alice Stewart and April Ryan. Appreciate your time. We here.